Hey everybody, it's Steph with Killer Sites and Studio Web, amongst other sites. So, a question that was put to me recently, how do you plan out, how do you go about building an app or a website? What's the process that you use? So you had somebody who uh, knows how to code, but they're not sure how to proceed with actually building a project. So, let me give you my uh, two cents. So I've been coding since 1994 worked on a lot of projects, including projects for publicly traded companies and tons of small and medium-sized businesses as well. So the way I approach it is to start with the screens, the actual views that you see in an app or in a website or in a web app. So if it was an, a web app, for instance, if I was building a shopping cart system, I would have like the main shot, the main page that people hit when they first hit the shopping cart, probably a list of products. I have the you know the view cart button and a list of products that they have in their cart, et cetera, et cetera. And then I would diagram out which pages people actually see when you're using the app. They would have the main cart page, maybe a product catalog page, maybe a checkout page, a login page. You get the idea. So you have to map out your pages. And the reason I start with the pages is because that's what your client is going to see. Now the client could be you. So it will help you visualize what, you know, how the app is going to work, or the client could be uh, another person, and so that's the best way of doing it because they can actually see the app in front of them. So what I would do with the web, for instance, I would just use very simple HTML. I'd pull out like some WYSIWYG app, some app that made it easy to just lay down code real quick, and I would just do it very simply. You know, I would just sketch it out. One column, you know, add, you know, one column, blah blah. Add the components, add the pages, so so that the client could see what is actually in the pages. Now, this is not for the design. This is not for the aesthetic. This is just to show them what is there, what information is being presented. That's all. Now, before you get to the screens, of course, you should talk to a client, and sort of take down notes. What do you want? What do you want your app to do? What you know, and write it all this down. And then the next step. Is screen. So step one, interview the client. That client could be you or somebody else. Find out what they want, what the app, to, what they want the app to do, what basic features they want. Step two, build the screens. And again, it's just dummy screens, very quick, so the client can see what it is is going to appear on the page. So it's not about design at this point. It's not about making it look good. It's not about usability. It's not about aesthetics. It's just about what's there. And then from there, once you get the A-OK -okay on that, when it looks pretty good, then the next thing I would do is look at the database. So look at designing the database based on the information that we're holding and tracking and grabbing with the screens, right? Because the screens show you, it shows you basically what the data is going to be. So then the next thing is you build your database. Now, most of the time, we're going to be using relational databases or as Others might call it SQL databases. MySQL, very popular one, most popular. You got Postgre, another very popular one, so on and so forth. So that's the next step. So first step, interview the client, find out what they want the project to do. This is whether it be a website, a web app, an iOS app, doesn't matter, same thing. Next thing you do is you build some screens. Show them what's, what are each of the views that they see. You know, the login page. Uh, the, the view card page, the checkout page, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you got that. So that's step two. Then once that's done, then step three is to build your database, to structure your database. And you look at, you know, step two, you look at your screens to figure out what's going to be in the database, which has, what has to be held in the database, and what's the best way to design the database to hold that information efficiently. And then step four is to start writing basic code that stitches the views, all the screens, to your database, makes that connection. And why do I say basic code? Because it's not a good idea to write rock solid code when you first start a project because you're not gonna really know what the project ultimately has to have, what needs to be there the first time you put it out. The clients won't know, you won't know. So the trick is, is to write really quick and dirty code rapidly get it out the door you know so it kind of works there'll be bugs things will break here and there so i'm gonna be the cleanest code 
but you're going to get something in the hands of your client or yourself as quickly as possible so you can start really figuring out what needs to be there. Because what you'll find, you may have to add, change, you're going to change a lot of things about the screens for sure. You may have to put, move, you know, we want this displayed here. We like to grab this type of information about the client and so on and so forth. And this will, of course, affect your database. And this will, of course, affect all the code that creates a connection between your screens and your database. Now, this will apply more or less to any type of app or web site. So even if you're building an iOS app, you know, again, there's there's that that brokering of what you're what you're saving in terms of data, in terms of information versus the screens and how it's displayed. So that's the process. Number one, interview your client, get basic requirements. Number two, build out screens so you could show the client because they won't really understand if you just give them a list of bullets. They really un understand when they see the screens. Number three, build your database. Number four, build very quick code, dirty code to connect them all. And when you got something where the, the client or yourself, you kind of like how the app works and so on, then you clean up all that code. You clean up the UI so everything is structured properly. You clean up your database. And then you go back again. It's, it's like a, a, cycle, a cyclical process. Iterate. First round, very basic. Second round, polished. Third round, nicely polished. And then at the end, once you know where everything is placed, you understand how the app works, then you get in the UX guy, come and make it usable. You get in the designer guy or yourself, make it look pretty. And that's pretty much how I would go about building these type of projects. There's another school of thought which was very popular in the late 90s and early 2000s. I'm, frankly, I'm not sure how popular it is today. I'm sure it's being used still. Is uh, They would think about uh, projects, they would interview the client, and then they would start writing all their code, their object code, if it was object-oriented program, which, which most of the time it is today. So they'd write all their code, and then from that they would generate you know, databases and, uh, and their UX, which to me is the wrong approach. So again, one interview, Client number two, screens number three, database number four, code to connect it all together. All very rough, quick and dirty, just to get it out, kind of hobbling, working. And then once you, 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 you're you pretty secure about what it is that you're building, you know, then you just reiterate, polish, 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 so you got a nice app. And that's the way to go about building projects in a most efficient manner. This is uh, more or less a RAD approach, rapid application development approach, and uh, that's what I subscribe to. Thanks a lot.